Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Those were all fantastic and very interesting submissions, and I wish we had more time. Um, we're left with 10 minutes, so let's get cracking, and if you can keep responses as brief as possible. Numko, coming to you first, also because you've worked in government. Is the ANC scared of the media? No. <laughs> no, but, but, but let me start from clarifying some of the misconceptions, I think, Karate and, and, and Fatima has. There's no one who is suggesting that government must regulate media. There's no one. Aren't you suggesting and that all the no, time? No, okay. not at all. Independent regulation is not equal to government regulation. In South Africa, independent it's regulation, independent, independent regulation uh, for example, ICASA is independent, no, IEC is independent. No, they're not. Okay, Who you can... Who appoints ICASA's council? No, it's, they're not. You nominate yourself. It's political. Um, okay, fine. But the point is, <laughs> the point is um, we, should, we should not close discussions. Mm. The fact of the matter is the, the profession, part of what compromises um, uh, uh, the, the growth of our media is not just um, um, uh, the, 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 the factors that you spoke to. There's a bigger debate. The, the profession is declining in terms of ethics, in terms of compliance with the press code. But also for new entrants, there's a question of difficulty to play in this space because this, the, the, the market structure is anti-competitive. The entire value chain is controlled by the concentration of, by the way, when, when we talk of a diversified media ownership and control, therefore it's not just about ownership, it's end control and the entire value chain. And I agree with you that indeed, we're talking here about class, content, we're talking about um, um, gender, uh, uh, balance content, etc. We agree on many of those things. But we shouldn't fear a discussion on transformation by simply saying it is about race. No. Race, of course, it is part of the equation, but it is about all of all those considerations, including content. Okay. Thanks, Lincoln. So, Ngeza, from your perspective as an editor of a leading newspaper, are the NC scared of the media? I think perhaps not necessarily scared of the media as such, but I think when one is in a position of power, there is a certain threat that naturally comes from access to information that you wouldn't like to see the light of day. And this is common in a lot of governments. We were talking Edward Snowden just the other day, who is still a fugitive from justice in the US, and if he goes back, he'll get arrested, but there are very important reforms that are going to take place as a result of his revelation. So it is a function of being in power. To answer the question, by the way, about who phones me the most, companies listed on the JSE phone me the most. <laughs> I've, had, I've had more lawyers' letters from JSE listed companies, and I've never had one from a politician, not one, in the last year. So it is about power, it is about mm. threat, but I also want to disagree with him. We've got a new entrant right here, and his name is Gareth Cliff, mm. right? It is about understanding what consumers want and trying to give it to them in the way that they want it. I do not believe it is necessarily about breaking down anything that already exists. Try and distribute a newspaper on your own with diesel prices going up, with all the other problems that arise out of trying to distribute a newspaper and see how long you'll keep it going. As it is, I am certain independent newspapers, Kexton, Times Media, find it difficult to sustain the economies of this. So you ask me, is business day growing or not? 28,000 circulation per day and almost three quarters of a million per month on the website. No distribution cost, low overheads and so on, and yet the information is out there for 18 hours a day. Right. So it is about where you choose to play. Okay. And I somehow think we're playing in a space that we should have played four years ago. Okay. Gareth, as Songeza says, you're a new entrant. Have you found <laughs> Uh, the, the media market in general to be hostile to new entrants and also please will you give us your listenership figures? <laughs> yeah, we, we have, um, it's interesting, we, we, we're actually, uh, we, we're looking at about 400,000 podcast downloads a month, which equates to about 100,000 a week. Wow. Those are podcasts that obviously people have on the one piece of equipment that you carry with you everywhere you go, so it's almost like a takeaway form of radio. Um, and I, I mentioned the podcast figure because live listening to me isn't important. Um, you can't measure it effectively on radio, let alone on internet radio. Um, it's more useful for advertisers to know that what they want mentioned, the messaging they want, is in a branded content solution in the form of, of a podcast. So that's where the value lies for us. In terms of total downloads, since August last year, we're at about 3.8 million podcasts since then. 
And I think that's good considering we're a year old mm -hmm. and we didn't have investors or government help or necessarily the advertising community behind us when we started this. It's me. You're looking at it. Mm -hmm. And luckily now it's not just me. I mean, the, the exciting thing, thank you, but the exciting thing for me is that we've created an opportunity here. We've got 38 different shows. I mean, I'll give you a show if you want one. <laughs> Looking at your CV, there are a lot of formers there. We can turn into currents. I can stop mine. I don't mind. And, and, and this is the point. I do mean, I do mean this, this is hugely important to me. This is the proper democratization of the media business. It's very exciting unless you're a media owner. I think then it's a scary proposition and you'll try to buy up whatever you can to keep control and to keep a, a throttle hold on advertising revenue. And I think it's scary to government because government inherently don't like change. The party who are in are conservatives by definition. Um, so they want things to stay the same. I think that the audience, the consumer, the reader, the user, the EFF, understand that they are the most important part of this equation. They will decide what happens with the media, not government, not us. Um, and not, not even a discussion of a small room of us like this. It needs to be a mass movement, and it is starting to happen. I'm feeling the sea change. And believe me, the rug is coming out from under traditional media in a way that I think is quite alarming to them. They needn't be afraid if they've got good content. You said it properly, Songyezo. We're all content providers. And if it's not a sexy word. It doesn't sound as good as journalist, DJ, presenter, editor but it's far more valuable because it is, it's really the definition of what you do. Okay. We're providing content to niche and to mass audiences, and I believe the niche audience is going to become far more valuable than the mass audience okay. in the future to advertise. Thanks, Gareth. Long-winded answer to your no, question. No, that's so. great. Last one for you, Fatima. You said it best, I think. We all want a free, healthy, vibrant press. Nobody wants to pay for it. Where can we get the money to run the kinds of projects that we need to? Where do we get the money for costly investigative journalism? Can, well, you, can you help us? I mean, there's actually an obligation on the state to provide that support to build an independent and a diverse media. We're not quite sure what's actually happening with our public money. So, in fact, we are funding it. We just don't know where it's going. In some cases, we do know where it's going because ad spend is being diverted from newspapers that are too independent to newspapers that are telling the good story. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's another battle. Um, the investment in the SABC, in TV and radio, in terms of original content, in terms of news, in terms of documentaries, debates, you know, we have some partners who are working on trying to hold the SABC board accountable. So we're still doing very 1994 work on institutions that by now should have been presenting much more quality independent media. Mm. So unfortunately, you have to go to the private sector or donors such as myself. Mm. But I mean, if you compare the amount of resources we have to the amount of money we just spent on a fire pool, you know, it's, it's and, I, and I don't mean that in a flippant way. I think that at the heart of this is people don't realize there was a slide put up earlier about the wasteful expenditure. Mm. South Africa is not poor. We have enough money. We have a national treasury that is collecting a lot of money. It's the allocation and how we prioritize which media outlets it's going to go to this month, which media outlets it's going to go to next month. Right. Okay, so for me, you can have to go to the private sector, somebody what we call a venture philanthropist, who's not interested in a commercial rate of return, who's just interested in breaking even. Mm. Alternatively, you have to go to your users, readers, consumers, whatever mm. you want to call it. You have to go to your staff, set up something like the Guardian, you know, where you establish a, a trust. Or you have to go to a bunch of individual philanthropists or very wealthy South African business people who will actually fund uh, a free and independent media for at least the next 20 years. I think that people are not sufficiently concerned. I, you know, for me, I worry every night that we're going to go back to having one or two basically publications or original content sources where you can actually get accurate, reliable media, not just mm. some hashtags, you know, around something that's really hilarious. Mm. Um, and so I think it's quite serious. I don't want to live in a country like Zimbabwe, which it currently is, or Swaziland, 
where there is an onslaught against independent media. Mm. And I think if we're serious that that is something that is at the heart mm. of our constitution and what we want, then we're going to have to find innovative ways of funding it. So Iraj and the other person who was on the business panel, you know, let's see your CSI in the media space. Absolutely. Well said, Fatima. Guys, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Thank you so much. I'm sorry we don't have more time. Much appreciated. Oh,